This video will review everything you need to know about setting up your brand new Beamspring keyboard. First, we're going to take everything out of the box and inspect for damage. A washer may have fallen off or become loose, so you probably want to glue it back on. Super glue is what I use. If you need to take apart the module for whatever reason, the washer can be removed. The Beamspring keyboard is a robust design. Every part is designed to be 100% user replaceable or user repairable. If you are unable to solve an issue after you have reviewed the manual, both the written manual and this video, please direct all questions and support requests to the project thread on the mechanical keyboard forums such as Deskthority. Please do not email me or post on the Q&A page for technical support. The great communities of mechanical keyboard fans on sites like Deskthority, GeekHack, and Reddit are great at sorting out all types of issues. You will never be out of reach of someone who can offer you advice and help in the coming years. The Beamspring keyboard project philosophy is for users to be able to fix small issues themselves due to the simplicity and full repairability of your Beamspring keyboard. Here are the parts of the Beamspring module, as I have named them for this reference video. The factory has 100% assembled everything for you already, except of course for the keys and the feet. Beam barrel part A, beam barrel part B, metal part for the beam barrel, metal part for the beam flipper, flipper, spring, o-ring, and the washer. Reasons for adjusting the key will be to fix a stuck key, or key that doesn't click, or to try to make the sound more consistent with other keys. Do not install the keys when doing this test, as it will make the rest of the setup difficult. From left to right, top to bottom, press each module many times. Try pressing it using different amounts of force to try to get it to become stuck, harder to press, or sluggish or slow to return up to the default position. Now we are going to test each key and use the wiggle method to try to fix any of the stuck or sluggish beam spring modules. In this video, I will refer to the beam module and keys interchangeably. Of course, there is no key installed just yet on each beam module. Some modules may not be fixable this way. Either they may have broken in shipping or the fly plate may have separated and need to be reattached. For these modules, we will write down the ones we will need to adjust and later on, we'll open up the keyboard to take those bad modules out and adjust them. Write down each key that you want to adjust using your preferred notation. For example, W or 3-3 to indicate what will be the W key that is located in row three, the third key from the left. Do not worry if you notice that many keys require adjustments. You may have to adjust a lot more than you would with a Model F keyboard. Here is the process to fix a stuck module. While you can fix most stuck modules without having to remove the module, it's easier to fix it with the module outside of the keyboard. Just like the Model F keyboards have a wiggle method to fix stuck keys, the Beamspring keyboards also have a wiggle method. The Beamspring wiggle method is performed as shown here, pressing down and using force to push the white part of the beam module clockwise and then counterclockwise, about 10 times in each direction. The goal is to widen the beam module just a little bit so that the two plastic parts of the module can move smoothly. If that does not improve things enough, then you can do the same wiggle method, but with the key not pressed. For the ultimate beam spring experience, you could even take off all the key modules to fine tune each one sound. Be careful with the spacebars module as that module can only be switched with another trimmed module because the stabilizer wire is in the way. This is how the metal part should look like. There should be a fair amount of distance from the metal part's bent curves to the flipper below it. Also, the metal part's wings should be equally spaced as shown, with about a half inch of space between them. Making them a little bit closer than this will make the beam modules more snappy, though too much 
may result in the module not working well. This is more of an art than a science, so try your own adjustments and test each one to see how it sounds. Here's the process to reattach the fly plate, which consists of a metal part and a capacitive plastic beam flipper. The beam spring mechanism works by lifting up the capacitive flipper when the key is pressed. This is the opposite of how the Model F keyboard works. In the Model F, the flipper is pressed down when a key is pressed. To accommodate MX style plate mount stabilizer inserts, the beam spring modules of the 2U and larger keys have been trimmed a bit. For all the keys except the spacebar, these stabilizer inserts actually hinder operation of the keys and will make them get stuck in almost every instance, though they are there for your experimentation. You should only use the spacebar's stabilizer insert and leave all the others uninstalled. With the beam spring module design, even the widest right shift key functions fine and can be pressed even in the extreme corners without the stabilizers. The trimming has no effect on keyboard operation, but it does not allow the key to lock in to the top of the case like all the other keys. For this reason, I recommend moving these trimmed modules to keys inside the main block of your keyboard, not in the top or bottom rows of this main section, so that they are packed tightly with other keys. Definitely keep a note of where you put these trimmed modules, as you may need to switch one out with the spacebars module in the steps coming up. Each beam spring hole in the case is notched, so be sure to position things correctly when putting everything back into position. The notch should line up with the hole in the module. For reference, you can see how your other modules are installed. Here's the process to fine tune the sound of the beam spring module. In my experience, the sound can be fine tuned by adjusting the bend of the metal fly plate ever so slightly inwards or outwards, while taking care to replace or move to another key any key whose other inner metal part is permanently bent. For this reason, it is very important to carefully remove the fly plate from this other metal part so as not to permanently bend or crease that part. Now is the time to open up the keyboard and adjust the keys. Put the keyboard upside down on its two foam inserts and open it up. As a note, the controller and capacitive PCB are mounted to the keyboard bottom plate and it is attached by a grounding wire to the rest of the case. So be careful to just flip over that case bottom as shown. Refer to your list and remove each affected module. Now you can see why we did not install the keycaps earlier because it would have prevented us from easily removing each module. The keyboard may now be reversed from left to right, so keep that in mind when removing the modules.
Next, we are going to install the spacebar, which is the trickiest key to install. To adapt the old Beamspring modules to have compatibility with Cherry MX style keys, the spacebar requires an MX plate mount stabilizer insert and an extra spring to provide enough force for the spacebar to return so it does not get stuck. These are both included with your keyboard. Without the additional beam spring, the spacebar would get stuck. Just like with the Model F keyboards, installing the beam spring spacebar is more of an art than a science. We are going to insert the spare beam spring into the spacebar area shown and twist the spring a few times either clockwise or counterclockwise as needed. The more the spring is visible on top of the keyboard, the more force the spring will require to press it. I like five spaced out rings or turns of the spring to be visible plus the three rings pressed together at the ends of each spring, so a total of about eight rings visible. This gives the spacebar a slightly heavier weighting than the other keys, while reducing the chances that the force is not enough to have the spring return after it is pressed. If you prefer a lighter spacebar force, you can twist that spring, so less of it is visible outside the keyboard. Though as mentioned before, if you do too little, then the spacebar may not operate properly. Please do let me know if you do any experimentation with the spacebar and have any recommendations. We are not yet ready to test the spacebar just yet. Be careful with this step as the plastic stabilizer is easy to break. However, you can just replace it with a spare as they are interchangeable. As a note, the other stabilizers in your kit have been trimmed on one side to accommodate tight placement with a 2U wide keys beam spring module. Though as noted before, you should only use MX stabilizers with the spacebar and not with any other keys like backspace, enter, shift, or numpad zero. Also very important, never reinstall a spacebar without taking apart the keyboard as shown. If you try to push the spacebar from the top without a finger placed below the plastic stabilizer, then you will likely break the plastic stabilizer. Now we will push the two MX stabilizer inserts into the spacebar. Be sure to push this as shown with your finger pressing down on the plastic stabilizer part and your other finger below the spacebar as shown. When testing the various keys after putting everything back, never test without screwing in all of the screws and putting the keyboard down on a flat surface. Do not test with the keyboard on top of the foam inserts. You may accidentally use too much force and push a module out of position. If a module falls out of the locked position in the top case, if you cannot nudge it back in place, then the best option is to flip the keyboard upside down and put it on the foam inserts, open up the keyboard and reseat the modules. At this time, we can do an initial test of the spacebar by holding with one hand the spacebar's module in place, pressed down firmly into the case, and with the other hand, press down the spacebar and see if it responds well. It should require a little more force to press down than the other keys, but not too much more force, unless you prefer more force for the spacebar and have that second spring a little more visible. You may find that one side of the spacebar has separated from its stabilizer. Maybe the spacebar is not installed firmly onto the module, or maybe the spring needs to be twisted so it is higher or lower. If you find that the spacebar is still not responsive or functional, you may need to follow the above wiggle method to fix a sluggish or stuck module, as it may make the module more smooth and fix issues you may be having. As a last troubleshooting step, you can always switch the spacebar module with another trimmed module from a 2U or wider key. Once the spacebar is good, we can put the bottom plate back. Before doing this, check every module to make sure it is the same height with the other modules. A module that is slightly too high or not seated properly may affect operation of the keyboard. Install all of the screws and make sure everything is tight, but do not over tighten. After this, you can do another test where you press each key several times and then you can install the keys finally. In the initial stages of you using the keyboard, you may notice that some of the modules do get stuck if you have not caught every issue and you may have to go back once or twice to fix these modules. For fixing a stuck module, the wiggle method does not require you to take apart the whole keyboard. You can try the wiggle method with an installed module. For best results, cover any holes with black electrical tape, except for the LED holes, of course. It is best to keep dust out of the beam spring modules by covering the keyboard with a dust cover when not in use. For example, I have used an anti-static vinyl keyboard cover for my beam spring keyboards. Now we will connect the keyboard to the computer to test each key with the P. Andrew signal level monitor utility. First, open the utility. Next, connect the keyboard to the computer and click signal level monitor in the utility. You can proceed with testing and pressing each key to make sure that it is good. And that's all for now. 
If you'd like to customize the programming of your BeamSpring keyboard, use the QMK, Configurator, or VIA, Vial, or several other firmware options. Please see the Model F setup video for additional configuration information, as the BeamSpring keyboards are configured the same way.